Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got five replays in five different tanks. This is a video that we're going to look at all of the Bulldog variants at tier 8. And we're going to show them off and then show some of the stats and stuff so you can see the differences between all five of the Bulldogs. If you do enjoy the video, as always, please don't forget to like and subscribe down below as it really does help the channel. And yes, this is the first Bulldog. The very first Bulldog that was in the game. Kind of, because obviously it was a tier 7 when the first Bulldog came in, and now it's a tier 8. And it also had a 10-shot autoloader back in the day, which is now on a premium version that you'll see later on. But yeah, this is the M41 Walker Bulldog. This is the Tech Tree Tier 8 American Light Tank that leads up to the Sheridan. And it's one of those, again, that's got a place in my heart as a light tank, because I remember the good old days back when it did have that 10-shot autoloader. It was a hell of a lot of fun. And to be honest, the Bulldog still is always a lot of fun. If I'm honest, the Bulldogs aren't my kind of light tank, because they're just a bit big, fairly easy to hit at times, and... Yeah, I was just never the biggest fan, but at the same time, you can do so much with them, and they are pretty damn nice light tanks to play. Pretty versatile in a lot of different ways, which is what you want, right? They're not as hard to play as some of the other light tanks in the game, say so, say the Chinese light tanks, for example, where you've really got to get used to how they handle. They're, they're very, very versatile tanks. They're pretty damn enjoyable. They're very good with the view range. Got pretty good camo, got good guns. You know, that's just the way that they are. So, what does the Bulldog have in terms of its statistics on the Tech Tree one? Well, on this American Bulldog, we've got 175 APCR pen, which has 1219 shell velocity. It's got 210 pen heat with 975 velocity. It's got 38 pen HE rounds as well, with the same velocity. 68 km an hour top speed. 800 horsepower, which gives you... The 34.5 horsepower per ton, which means you really don't struggle to hit your top speed in this tank whatsoever. You've got 410 meters of view range, which is a standard thing across all the Bulldogs now. 1.7 seconds aim time, which means this gun aims in super duper quickly. 0.34 base accuracy, which means again this gun is it is pretty accurate when you do get it fully aimed. 4.4 second base reload with 272 camo with the build that I am going to show you in a minute. And yeah, you can see that the gun is very, very versatile on this tank. The view range is really, really nice. You've got a good top speed. You hit that top speed easily. The only real struggle for the tank is the fact that you've got 175 pen APCR with 210 pen heat, which means that you obviously struggle against a lot of tier 10s. And being a tier 8, you do see tier 10 a lot, which means that, yeah, there's sometimes you just can't do much. You feel like you're a bit useless sometimes in the bulldog which is why obviously you've got to use your speed and your camo and your view range to outspot the, the tier tens and try and hope that your allies will shut them down and stuff like that and obviously you're a light tank you're, you're probably you're not supposed to be brawling with the tier tens but there are games where necessity arises right where you have to deal with these things and with the penetration it's a little bit of a struggle at times but you know that, that doesn't make the bulldog any worse for it. It's still a hell of a lot of fun to play and it's still a damn solid tank. So what do I run in terms of a crew on the Bulldog? Now this crew I'm not going to show you again. I'm going to show you this, just this once because basically I run the same crew across all the Bulldogs because once again they're pretty much very very similar tanks just with slightly different statistics. So what do I run in terms of a crew on the old Bulldog? I run Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Sixth Sense, Situational Awareness, Camouflage Expertise, Muffled Shot, Steady Aim, Snapshot, and Run and Gun. All three of these gun perks to make sure that this gun is as good as it can be. And I really want to help it out as well, if I can, so I can get these run and gun shots that you're seeing here. The two camouflage perks in Camouflage Expertise and Muffled Shot, so that I can reduce the effect of firing on my camouflage with Muffled Shot, and just make the camo better in general. And then the other perks are generally what you're going to take on most tanks in World War II. And then in terms of equipment, now equipment's where it changes across the Bulldogs, but on the M41 Walker Bulldog, I run the Advanced Loader, the Optics, and the Camo Net. The advanced loader to make sure that this reload is really, really quick and I can keep firing on the move as much as possible. The optics to be able to spot for myself. And the camouflage net to make my camo down to that 272 camo to make it really, really quite nice to use. To be able to stick on the periphery of my camouflage and outspot the enemy team and try and get assistance, which is what you've seen in this game pretty much. And yeah, I don't run the gun stabilizer because this is one of those guns that actually with the... 
on the move and turning the turret dispersions, which is 1.65 on the move and 1.05 on during turret rotation, the gun doesn't bloom out that much at all. And with the setup that we've got, you get the aim time down to 1.57. So the gun just always feels like it's ready to go. So I, it felt like you didn't really need the gun stabilizer that much at all for this gun on the Tech Tree Bulldog. And that's definitely something that's very, very nice for this tank. So you can see this game that we are in in the Bulldog, we are on Nominee Nom and we're in a tier 9 game. We're up to 3.5k spotting with 1600 assistance and you've seen us basically run around like a lunatic, keep ourselves on the periphery of the camouflage circle that you can see the little dotted line. We basically kept the enemy tanks on the periphery of that and then ran around so that we could keep spotting them up for my team who were sat on the hills to be able to get assistance damage. And then we were getting shots on the move and stuff where we felt like we could get some damage too. Just glorious. We spotted this Bayer who is down here in the town and I'm just like, you know what, I'm going to chance it. This man's going to struggle to get his gun down. Let's make it as hard as possible for him to hit us. And we have managed to get round him. This is a, you know, this is a problem for this Bayer. Turretless tank destroyer problems, am I right? So he's doing his best here. And that is, he's managed to get himself to a point where he could get his gun down. But, well, I should I say get his gun on target. But sadly for him, he couldn't get his gun down. So we're now trying to do our best to track him. We dodge his fire there. Now he's fired. We know that he can't get a shot at us. We're still trying to blow his tracks off, which we finally got in. That didn't, that didn't pen, that just did track only. We go for the back drive wheel this time. We're trying our best to keep, again, blow his tracks off. Now we know he's fired and he's blown his repair kit. This man is now trapped and we have him permatracked. This is where it's beautiful for a light tank like the Bulldog because this guy obviously having no turret means that, yeah, he's doomed. I'm so sorry. This is, this is cruelty to small, well, big animals. This is cruelty to big animals and we shut down that bear with the fire in the end as well. Putting us on to 3.6k damage and 3.5k assistance. Once again, we knew the bear has no gun depression, right? And it's basically got no traverse on its gun either. So if we could get, make it as hard as possible, so we wiggle, 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 wiggle in front of him, so it made it as difficult as possible for him to actually get a shot at us. Then we got round him, and the plan was always to try and blow off his tracks if possible, so that he just could not traverse anymore to get his gun on target. That's what we did, and we abused the poor man, and we got rid of him. Then we got some shots into the Projecto 66, who was distracted. Now there's only one tank left. It is the AMX AC 48, who we managed to get a nice shot on the move. And I'm looking at this guy going, oh no! He might just slap a shot in, but we've still got our repair kit, thankfully, which repairs our tracks and our engine. And we're just going to keep ourselves moving to stay away from him as the 704 slaps a big shell into that tier 8 French TD. And he's out of here. And we finished the game with the victory. The five kills, 4.1k damage, 3.4k assistance. I mean, what's this? 7.5k combined. Nice game there. Ace tanker, the Confederate. And yeah, 2.2k base XP. A damn nice game there for the Bulldog. Showing how to handle it. Essentially, you know, you, you keep yourself on the edge of the view range. Keep spotting people. And they keep working them over with the gun, which is definitely very, very nice with that nearly near 3.2k DPM, if you can use it, that we have with that setup on the tank. So now we're on to the second replay. And the second replay, I believe this was the first premium Bulldog. Way, way, way back. And that is the M41 Brazil. We're in the M41 Brazil. And this one actually has a 90mm gun. That's the difference between this and the the American Bulldog. I'll just say they're both in the American Tech Tree. You know what I mean? The, the, between this and the Tech Tree Bulldog. And one of the things that this tank has is a 90mm gun that fires HE as a standard round. Which is a bit weird. It's a little bit weird because you get HE as standard and heat as a premium. Uh, it's a pretty quick tank. It was always a pretty quick tank, but it was one of those tanks that could be a pain in certain matchups because you would not be able to do too much because you'd have the HE. And your premium round was a heat round, which as a premium tank was a little bit irritating sometimes because that meant that if you wanted to be effective, and especially in tier 9 and 10 games, you had to fight the heat rounds, which meant obviously you were losing money. But you could do stuff like what you're seeing against this Nameless, which is fire the HE rounds at tracks and stuff, track people, and hope your friends give you assistance, which is exactly what just happened to that poor Nameless. So let's take a quick look at the statistics of the M41B. So the M41B has 102 HEP with 320 Alpha for 792 foot shell velocity. It also has 250 Heat Pen, which has 240 damage with 853 shell velocity. 
45 hey chi pen with 320 alpha for 732 velocity so you're never really going to take the the third hey chi choice you're always going to take the standard hep for 102 pen and then take the 250 heat as well and you're more than likely going to take far more heat shells than you are the hep shells because your hate shells will be far more useful in a lot of situations than the HEP. But the HEP is fantastic for being that light tank killer. And that is what the M41B excels at. And that is being the, the light tank assassin. Because that HEP, that HEP pen mixed with the 320 Alpha, mixed with the fantastic reload that this thing has, means that, yeah, you absolutely shred the poor light tanks. You've got a 72.4 kilometer an hour top speed, which means you're actually faster than the American Tech Tree Bulldog. With a 680 horsepower engine, which means you've got 29.09 horsepower per ton. And that means you're actually, you're actually faster than the, bull, the M41, but you struggle to get... Well, you don't struggle. You get up to your top speed slower than the American Tech Tree Bulldog. You've got 410 meters of view range, which, like I say, is pretty standard of all the Bulldogs. Two second aim time, which means this gun does get aimed in pretty quickly. 0.36 base accuracy, which is on the derpier end of accuracy, but it's not too bad. You've got 6.3 second reload, and then 271 camo with the build that I have, which is the same crew that you saw from the previous Bulldog. And in terms of equipment, I actually run the camo net, optics, and the gun stabilizer. I don't run the I don't run the advanced loader. And the reason for that is I always felt like the reload on this tank was really, really good pre-6.0 at 5.10 second reload. And after 6.0, I could basically drop the advanced loader because I could get a skill that made it the same reload in the you know, in a, in rapid reload. And then, you know, max out my camo instead and make sure that the gun is good by running the gun stabilizer to make sure that the gun could actually hit things on the move and be, you know, somewhat efficient. And then keep my view range being ridiculously high at 525 meters of view range with optics and born leader, etc. And then I could run the camo net to make this tank actually fairly stealthy because what, the one thing obviously that bulldogs have a problem with is the fact that they are big targets they're fairly easy to hit if you're playing actively but not just that because they are fairly large light tanks their camo was never the best for light tanks so if you're running the camo net you can at least make it so that you can stay unspotted in a fair few situations like that you just saw me there fire at that bolting and not get spotted so yeah that's the reason i don't run the ramo because i feel like the 5.1 second reload for the 320 alpha or the 240 is still pretty damn nice oh you're saying actually with 4.7 seconds with a food boost it's still really, really damn nice, but I can make other things better, essentially, in that regard that will help the tank out a lot more than having, say, an extra half a second off the old reload. So, yeah, you're seeing this replay on Kaunas in the M41B. We've been brawling with some of the light tanks. We've been trying our best to get these HEP shells in. Let's say you, you really... This tank is all about managing your shell choice because you have to know what the 102 is going to do against and you have to know where you're going to need the 240 heat pen as well because like I say the pro the problem is there is a lot of tanks where you're not going to do anything too with that 240 sorry that 102 pen of the hep but 240 heat or 250 heat sorry will go straight through and really help you get the damage out and like I said the, the reload at 5.1 seconds for 240 alpha is definitely really really nice for this m41b the dpm is fantastic and with the gun handling being pretty damn good as well being down at 0.29 with the setup we've got 1.78 second aim time it just means that your gun is ready to go a lot and you just get yourselves into good flanking positions play fairly similar to the other bulldog as well where you know you keep yourself on the periphery keep spotting out with the fantastic view range using the decent camo and then just keep farming out with this gun because this gun is like i say absolutely beautiful in terms of its damage it just is a bit irritating that to be effective in quite a lot of matchups you have to fire premium because well your standard shell is not going to pen too much realistically so you can see we've got 79 hit points. We get fairly lucky there that the MX-30 missed us. We actually get the RBRT on that guy as well. Oh, sick air shot on the 257. RBRT, the 257 with the heat shell. It goes through his upper plate there while we were in midair. Beautiful scenes. But you can see because I've not got much hit points, I don't want to get too involved yet at this point against these guys because naturally they could shut me down. So I'm trying to move over into a position where I can stay safe but get shots at the AMX-30 and the other two. Unfortunately, we end up missing the shot on the MX-30. 
can we get the shot? No, we can't quite get the shot. The Kampfpanzer is not quite giving us the shot either. So what we're going to do is we're going to move closer to the 257 and the Kampfpanzer now because they're starting to get farmed. So we may as well get closer to these guys and see if we can get the shot in. The 257 is actually moving around the rock, which made me go, oh no. So we move up on top of this little ridge line, get the shot into the Kampfpanzer with the surprise shot and shut down that guy. Now the 257 has realized we're here. I was thinking of dropping over and getting a shot into his butt, but to be honest, if I'd done that, I wouldn't have been able to get out too easily. And he has clearly realized I'm here, which means, yeah, we don't want to deal with that. Wait until he's distracted by the medium tank that's come around. And we're just going to start to get the shots into the back end of the 257. That's where we had to wait. We couldn't be too aggressive against that guy. We had to wait for him to get distracted. And he ends up getting shut down by the Type 59-2. And we finished the game with a pretty damn nice total there for the M41B. We finished with the four kills, 3.9k damage, 2.5k assistance, the ace tank of the Confederate with the 2.2k, nearly 2.3k base XP once again. The M41B, like I say, it's a pretty damn nice light tank. It's just that it, the, the, the rounds are a bit irritating at times just for having that standard round and the premium round. But then we're on to the M41 90mm, which it actually has a Halloween version as well, which is the Hurlenhund. And yes, we're on the M41 90mm, which was the very next Bulldog. This was the next premium bulldog that came out. It was the Hurlin Hun that came out first, not the unskinned one that you're seeing here. And it was basically the M41B, but better. Although, in a way, it was slightly worse at the time as well because it actually had the same top speed but worse engine power than the M41B. So it was, it was even more, it was just a really sluggish tank. And the base gun accuracy and stuff like that was slightly worse. But the DPM was very, very, very similar. And you actually had an AP round. You had a heat round and a HE round. And your HEP round, that was your standard HE, was actually the same as the standard round from the M41B. So in terms of your ability to fight back and, you know, be useful in most matchups, this tank was far better than the M41B for that. I never really clicked with this tank. I never really truly enjoyed it. And that was because the gun... The gun was frustrating. It loved to miss shots, which was irritating. And it was one of those that always liked to catch shells as well, just like all the other Bulldogs, to be fair. It always liked to get hit very, very easily. And then when you got hit, you got set on fire, which just deeply frustrated me. And thus, I never truly enjoyed this tank as much as I probably should have done. And I enjoyed other light tanks far more. So let's have a look at the statistics of the M4190 millimeter, and on the M4190 millimeter, it has 182 pen AP rounds with 830 velocity. It has 250 heat pen, which is the same as the Brazilian Bulldog for 830 velocity, and 102 hep pen on its standard HE for 773 velocity. So you can see with its penetration on its rounds, it basically didn't have to fire premium to be able to actually be effective, like the M41B has to. You could fire the standard AP rounds and deal with a lot of the situations you were going to face but then you could switch to the same 250 heat rounds that that tank had to be able to deal with the tier 9s and 10s and then if you wanted to go after light tanks you could also load the same 102 hep pen that the brazilian bulldog has on its standard he so you see the the thing why i always said that this tank was like slightly better than the brazilian bulldog just because you had the same ammo choice well you just had better ammo choices essentially for a slightly slower tank but they buffed it which meant that it's actually got a 72.4 km an hour top speed, this tank, which was the same as the Brazilian Bulldog anyway. But you've got 28.94 horsepower ton ratio with 680 horsepower. And that was something that they buffed on the Hurlin Hun slash M4190 a wee while ago, which meant that it's actually far less sluggish than it used to be. It used to be a really fairly sluggish light tank, but they made it so it was just, it made it hit its top speed far easier. And they also buffed stuff like it's 1.8 second aim time, which means that this gun gets aimed in very, very quickly. You've got 0.38 accuracy as well, which is not the best accuracy in the universe, which is, like I say, where, where the gun became a bit derpy and a bit annoying. And then you also had the 6.4 second reload with 321 camo with the base build. So the DPM is really good. And in terms of equipment on the... M41 90mm, I run the advanced loader, the gun stabilizer, and optics. Optics to be able to spot for yourself like normal. Gun stabilizer because this gun is derpy and really irritating. And the advanced loader to make sure the DPM is fantastic. And because I fight it, I use it as a more brawly light tank, essentially, than any of the others. So this game in the M41 90mm on Ghost Town 
ended spectacularly with the ram on that poor trailblazer. I'm the true um, the true German light tank king, says the M4190 mm as it nailed that trailblazer. We finished the six kills, 4.1k damage, 968 assistance, the ace tanker, high caliber, the top gun, 1928 base XP. That was a really fast fire game there, but it, again, it showed the M4190 mm in what it wants to do, and that is get stuck in, get fighting, and use the pretty damn good DPM that the tank has to good effect. Because that's that's basically the way I played the M4190 mm myself. I play it more as that pseudo medium tank as opposed to the light tank, where I can spot for myself, I can get assistance, but I use it to use the fantastic DPM and gun to my... Uh, good effect and just, you know, rack up the damage, which is what it can do. The only thing you've got to put up with is the fact that the M41 90mm does like to miss shots, which can be pretty damn frustrating. So now we're on to the fourth Bulldog. The fourth Bulldog. This is the fourth one that came out, and it is the Chinese M41D. Now, this tank is basically the American M41 Bulldog slow that is slower but better in most other ways, quite frankly. And that is that the gun handling is phenomenal. This gun on this tank is utterly phenomenal. The DPM is fantastic. The penetration is great. The shell velocity is fantastic. It's just such an all-round great bulldog. The only downside to it is it loses the top speed that a lot of the other bulldogs get, which is... Yeah, it just loses like three to, three to six kilometers an hour, essentially, compared to the other bulldogs. So what's the statistics of the M41D? Well, the M41D has 192 APCR pen with 170 damage, with 1,257 shell velocity on its standard, 227 APCR pen on the premium, with 1,433 velocity on its premium APCR round, which is absolutely phenomenal. 38 HE pen with 260 alpha, 732 velocity, which is really not very good, but that's like some of the other Bulldogs. 65 kilometers now top speed, which again is slower than the other bulldogs are because the others are obviously 68 to 72 kilometers an hour. You've got 780 horsepower with a 31.2 horsepower per ton ratio, which means you do hit the 65 kilometer an hour really, really easily. 410 meters view range, which again, fairly standard for the bulldogs. 1.5 second aim time, which is phenomenal. 0.33 base accuracy. With a 4.3 second reload and 283 camo with the build that we have got. So, yeah, this gun on this tank is absolutely fantastic. In terms of equipment for it, I do run the gun stabilizer, the camo net and the optics. Why? Because the reload is already very, very good. As you're seeing here, it's a 3.1 second reload without a gun rammer. Which means you get it down to about 2.8, 2.9 with the gun rammer. But to be honest, I felt like I wanted to make sure that this gun was good. I mean, just look, it never blooms. It never blooms with this setup, this gun. It's always ready to go, always ready to fire. If you don't run the gun stabilizer, it does bloom out a fair bit more. So I decided for me, for the M41D, what works best for me is making sure that this gun is always ready to go, will always hit the shots, and I forego that extra 0.3 of a reload, 0.4 of a reload, to make sure that I'm actually going to hit the shots as opposed to firing more often but missing more often, right? That's the, that's the velocity... Velocity? Philosophy! That <laughs> yeah, okay, brain, whatever. Philosophy that I go with for the M41D because it is really good in terms of this gun. Obviously, you've got the really good view range. you just got to bear in mind that you are a little bit slower than the other Bulldogs in terms of everything with this M41D, which is something that you might get a bit frustrated with and you might decide, okay, you know what? Screw the gun stabilizer. I'm going to run the traction system instead and go at... 71 kilometers an hour because that's what you'll get with the traction system because you've got such a good power to weight ratio as well You will hit that So you can see this game on fisherman's bait We're at 3.8k damage with 2.3k assist make that 4k damage And we've tracked this poor iron rain who is absolutely boned and we get some of the tracking assist on that guy as well as Most of the damage we know there's a light tank left which is a t41 e1 and the another TD. So what we're going to do is poke, get ourselves into a position where maybe we can get some shots at the T41E1. Try and find the TD, which we do. It's a scorpion. Oh boy, he gets absolutely slapped. And we get all of the assistance on that guy. We're now behind the other bulldog. Who gets shut down by Swindle? And we finished the game with a really nice total for the M41D. We finished the game with the epic victory. One kill, 4.3k damage, 2.1k base XP, 3.7k assistance. That's nearly 8k combined. Ace tank of the high caliber, the confederate. And yeah, that 2.1k base XP. A really damn nice game there for the M41D, which is one that most people should be 
aware of at this point because most people will have earned that in one of the season passes that was fairly recently. And yeah, you'll have had that tank. And you'll know that it is a pretty damn nice bulldog version. And we're on to the final bulldog version at tier 8. This is the tank that was the last to be released. And it is the T41E1. And the T41E1 is basically the old school bulldog with the 10 shot autoloader. So that's the difference between this and the others. But better. Because the old school bulldog used to have, I think it was 150 damage with the 10 shot autoloader. This thing has 170 damage with the 10 shot autoloader, which means your clip potential is 1700. Which means if you get in against stuff, you can full clip out a lot of the tier 8s you're going to be facing. Like a poor CS52 lease that you just saw there. And then we've still got some left over to shoot at this poor Batchat 12T. This 10 shot autoloader is absolutely devastating. If you catch people out, just like the old school bulldog, if you catch people out, it is phenomenal. And it is absolutely deadly. Because they just, yeah, their hit points just evaporate like that. You've obviously got to pick and choose your target and how you're going to assassinate because this tank is the assassin. You want to know where you're going to get in, where you're going to get out, where you're going to be able to get the clip out without taking too much damage yourself. Because naturally this is what is the typical auto get loader gameplay of wanting to sweep up without taking too many hits so that you're ready to deliver the damage, pretty much. So what are the statistics of the T41E1? Well, on the T41E1... We have 175 APCR pen with 170 damage for 1219 shell velocity. 210 heat pen for 170 damage with 975 velocity. And 38 HE pen with 260 damage for 975 shell velocity. You're never going to take the HE. Just because of ammo, you're never going to take the HE rounds on this tank. The 210 heat is it's basically this very, very, this tank is very, very similar to the Tech Tree Bulldog in a fair few areas. And that penetration is again one of those where it's pretty, it's, it's pretty okay for when you're top tier, but when you're against the tier 9s and 10s, it does start to struggle a little bit. But that's where your autoloader can be quite nice because obviously you can just start getting, you can catch people out, especially when they're lightly armored and start dishing out massive damage to people before they really are able to do anything. You've got a 70 km an hour top speed, which you hit because you have an 800 horsepower engine, which gives you a 35.08 horsepower per ton ratio, which is really, really good. And again, like I say, that means you get up to that top speed really, really easily. And you've got 410 view meter view range, which is again standard of all the other Bulldogs. 1.8 second aim time, which is really quick. It means the gun gets aimed in very, very fast. 0.36 base accuracy, which again is getting onto the derpy side of accuracy, but it's not too bad. 28.5 second reload with a 2 second intraclip reload on the auto loader with the 10 shot auto loader and a 272 base camo value with not base camo the 272 camo with the build that we have on this tank. So yeah, the 28.5 second reload is a little bit long, but to be honest for the clip potential and when you have the tank fully kitted out, it's a 22 second reload. It is absolutely deadly. And to be honest, you can wait for that time because you do have the assassin ability and it is very, very nice. And in terms of equipment on this tank, I do run the camo net, the gun stabilizer and optics. Gun stabilizer because I want to make sure that I'm using this auto loader very, very effectively. And I want to make sure that the gun is going to hit the shots when I go in to assassinate someone. The optics to be able to get my view range up to that 525 meters of view range so I can get some filthy assistance damage. And the camo net to make sure that this camo is as good as possible. Once again, if you weren't that bothered about the camo and because you're going to play it exceptionally active, you could definitely drop the camo net if you wanted to for the traction system to make sure that the tank goes at 77 kilometers an hour because it would hit that. Or you could drop the gun stabilizer if you're happy with the gun as it is and run the traction system as well, you know, instead. You know, it's completely down to you. It's how you want to set up the tank because, as always, with everything in this game, it's how you feel comfortable in playing a tank. Someone can tell you how to set something up, but you might not feel comfortable in playing the tank in that setup. You might change one or two things and go, no, this is perfect now. You know, it's, it's, it's always down to your personal preference. 
So this game on El Haloof, we managed to get 4k damage so far with 1300 assistance. Oh, we get the tracking shot on that KV-5, which tracks him in place. We're trying to pen him though, but unfortunately with 175 pen against the side of that guy, it's a very, very big struggle to actually pen it. But we did get the tracking assist. The stockade looked like he was coming for us, so we're at 4.1k damage with 2k assist. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to go after this Falcon T-92 and get away from the stockade. It's like, hello Mr. Falcon T-92. I was thinking about the ram, but I thought I might lose too many hit points. I have all the shells in my autoloader, so we may as well use them to shut that light tank down. I mean, face the T92LT there with that clip. Just go straight for the reload, because there's no point holding the shells. We know that this is the last clip of APFS, APDS, sorry, the last clip of AP, APCR that we have. So we have to bear in mind that if we fire this clip, we have to remember to reload to heat because you always need to keep your eye on your ammo count so that you're not having that awkward situation where you spend 22 seconds reloading three shells of APCR or something like that. So there's one tank left. It is the Contra Caro Mark II. And unfortunately, we don't get anywhere near it. We were starting to charge after it. I thought I could take a hit maybe from that guy, get round him and, you know, clip him out. But he gets shut down, fish with the two kills, the 4.9k damage, the 2.2k assist, the ace tanker, the sniper... The 2.2k base XP, a damn nice game there for the 10 shot auto loading Bulldog, which again is a very, very fun tank and I do think is probably the best of the lot. I think it's between this and the M41D for the best Bulldog variant, but they're very, very good tanks. And the Bulldogs, I'll say that they, they, they are what they are. That's all five of them. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching, and I'll see you next time. A great success.